Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. I have a video for you for DraftKings Week 1 NFL DFS. We're going to talk about five box running backs. Now, if you were uh, somebody who watched the channel last year, you know that on Tuesdays we did like FanDuel first look. We're not doing that video this year. If you want to watch the first look video, uh, the one is up on Monday for DraftKings first look. We are going to talk about something that I think is extremely important and a way to look at the running back position that is slightly different, a way that we've kind of looked at it on this channel in years past. So a five box running back. What is a five box running back? Well, it's somebody that you expect to get 20 plus touches. You can project them realistically for 20 plus touches on the week. They have to have some usage in the passing game. They are at home. They are favored and they get inside the five work. Those are the five boxes that we want to check off down our list when we're looking at running backs. Now, you can have guys that aren't five box running backs that are also going to be good plays. They're in a good matchup. They're maybe they're playing on the road. Maybe they're underdogs that day slightly, but they have good work in the passing game and they get like, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a great way to get exposure to players that are going to be under rostered on Sundays in tournaments that are checking off every single one of these boxes. It's a great way to find players that can win you a tournament that are going to outperform their percentage in a GPP come Sunday. So if you'd be so kind, it is week one. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad that you found it. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell. If you would like to get the add-on access, the best add-on that I believe that we have is our Discord channel. Click that join button, become a channel member. You get some of the best emotes that are there on YouTube right now, and you get access to the sub-only Discord that we have. There's some free channels in there if y'all want to join and you're not channel members, but they're really not all that populated unless you guys make them that way. But the sub-NFL, the sub-NBA, the sub-MLB, the NFT channels, everything, when you link your Discord to that channel membership here on YouTube, you guys get all access to that 5,000 member Discord where you can talk about whatever you want in DFS and have a great community uh, to help you out to make your lineup decision. So... Join up, jump in Discord, and let's get to the video. He's a legend. So before we get really started on this five box running backs video, I did want to let you guys know that if you click the description down below, if you click show more right there at the bottom of the video description, army of 100, thank you for the 200 bits. We are doing a massive fundraiser here. Uh, as a part of our community, trying to raise $25,000 over the course of the NFL season for No Kid Hungry. One in six kids is at risk of being food insecure, of hunger in America. No Kid Hungry does a great job of providing school breakfasts, school lunches, uh, delivering foods, or having pickups for food for people who are food insecure across the country. So let's do what we can. Let's let's help the kids out. There is a donation link in that description for Tiltify. There's a uh, the listener league is down in there as well. If you wanted to join our listener league, uh, $5 entry fee, three max, absolutely no rake. If we can fill this early, 4,000 members, about 25% full. You guys, uh, we're, we're going to have to let DraftKings know. We're going to have to get on the horn and say, hey, DraftKings, guys, make it bigger. There's also links to a bunch of discounts down there for ETR, for Fantasy Labs, Roto Grinders, uh, Daily Roto. There's a free 10-day trial over at Rotowire if you're interested in that. All those things are right there for you. Click show more on the description. So let's take a look over here at Fantasy Labs at their Vegas page. This is completely free. You don't have to be a sub to look at this. Uh, the first thing that we said when it comes to identifying a five-box running back or one of the five things is that they need to be favored. Another one, they need to be at home. So we're looking at home favorites. Let's exclude that Thursday night game. Uh not favored you know home not favored home and favored uh, are the tennessee titans home not favored are houston not favored buffalo is favored but do you want to play any buffalo running backs falcons are favored at home and a high total game at that san francisco favored by a touchdown or more and there's a lot of data and trends that show that if a team is favored by more than seven points the running backs do tend to do better than if they're favored by like less than three points the Washington football team, not favored. Carolina Panthers favored. You already know who the cover boy is, so you know he's one of our five box guys. Kansas City at home and favored by a touchdown, six and a half, and uh, has risen since open from six to six and a half. 
New Orleans. Not favored. Giants, Patriots. These are Sunday night and Monday night games. So let's get to our first guy and talk about him, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, you know him, you love him, you know what he does, right? There's, there's no shock that he is on this list. Now there's the danger that if the Panthers are at home and favored every week, that Christian McCaffrey is just going to be one of the headliners in this video every single week of the year. Luckily for us, uh, the Panthers are not great. So he's not going to show, at least luckily for me, being the content creator, I don't have to talk about the same guy every week. There will be different players cycling through this list. And uh, he's good. Basically, a wide receiver one or low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two. Also, if you subtract all of his passing yards and all of his passing stats, he's still like a back-end running back one because of all of his inside the five carries, one of the league leaders uh, in the games that he's been healthy for the past three seasons with the amount of usage that he gets uh, inside the five-yard line. Definitely have an expectation of 20 touches, touches being uh, carries, plus receptions. He gets over 20 of those on a very common basis. He is one of these guys that you want to target. He's only 9,500. In my opinion, the right price for Christian McCaffrey on DraftKings is 10.5 to 11K. Also, most weeks we're not going to have the value that we have here in week one across the board. And I mean, value in week one typically exists between 4K and 6K, right? There's a lot of guys that are priced down by anywhere from five to 20% what they would be in a normal week. But then we also have this value tsunami that came flying at us at wide receiver with like 10 players that are sub 4K that are extremely viable just based on volume alone. They're great floor plays. And a lot of them are ceiling type players, young, spry, downfield, high A dot type players who can make big splash plays as well. The fact that these high floor, high ceiling guys exist in week one is making Christian McCaffrey somebody who's going to be extremely popular uh, on the list for us here. I have Alvin Kamara in here. Let's count the boxes, shall we? Let's take a look back here. This game, they are underdogs by three. What boxes does Alvin Kamara check off for us? Does he have an expectation of getting 20 plus touches? I believe that he does. Now he's usually going to be somebody who carries the ball somewhere between 11 and 15 times. That means he's going to have to make up for it through the air. Now, if we take a look back, and we did on first look, and we isolate Alvin Kamara for games that Michael Thomas doesn't play over the past two seasons, his splits are tremendously different. So he's a very good player. He's an all-pro player. He's an amazing player when Alvin Kamara is the guy with Michael Thomas still on the field. But with Michael Thomas out, he averages 30 fantasy points per game over the last two seasons. It's a tremendous amount of volume. Uh, they are home, but they're also not at home. Uh, he checks off four boxes for me here. So not a five box running back, but I think that he's one of those four box guys uh, because they are not favored, but he is a game flow independent running back. If they're playing from ahead, it's probably because Kamara did some awesome things. Uh, if they're playing from behind, he's just going to see more usage in the passing game, especially with Michael Thomas out and not a lot of options to catch the ball. So four boxes for Alvin Kamara. A five box running back in week one does look like it is Mike Davis. Atlanta is at home. Atlanta is favored. Mike Davis is the lead back and does project to get somewhere around 20 touches. We saw him last season get a lot of usage in the passing game. Uh, I'm not expecting 6 to 10 targets, but probably 17 carries uh, and possibly, you know, 4, 5, maybe 6 targets. Not expecting 7, 8, 9, 10. But we know that he has done that in the past, you know, a couple of times, especially early last season replacing CMC, but he is a guy who can get you four to six targets a game, maybe not six to 10, but four to six is good enough. In a really high powered game, a really high, great, you know, high pace, good offensive environment here. And people are looking for every reason to not roster Mike Davis. So I think that he can give us a five box running back here in week one, who is going to come in probably at a lower percentage than he should. Uh, so monitor what his percentage projection is across whatever sites uh, you use for your uh, those calculations, right? Just see, is this a guy that people are going to ignore because of the other prices of players in that range? You see that he's 5,400. Looking at the running backs in that range, let's say 5K to 65. Naheem Hines, no. 
McKissick, people aren't going to roster him. Harris against Miami, albeit he's at home, doesn't get any passing game usage, might not get all the goal line. Uh, Melvin Gordon, a three, people are not psyched to play him. Mike Davis, no. David Johnson, definitely no. Mo Stair, we'll talk about him in a little bit. Antonio Gibson, people definitely want to play him. Chris Carson, people definitely want to play him. Miles Gaskin, trending upward uh, with the lack of competition that he has in that backfield. Joe Mixon, probably going to be one of the highest played running backs. Uh, here in week one, Najee Harris, people very excited about him, albeit I think it's a difficult situation for him. He will get the volume. And James Robinson might be one of the top five played running backs on the week. So I don't think you're going to see a high percentage of people on Mike Davis. But he checks off all five boxes, something to monitor as the week goes on, if you can get some leverage on the field. And the last five box guy, there's three of them this week, is Clyde Edwards E. Lair for the Kansas City Chiefs. The only box that I'm not sure he checks off, and I don't think anybody's sure if he's going to check this box off, is expecting 20 carries. If you don't want to check that one, fine. If you say, Al, I think he's four boxes. I don't think he checks off five. That's fine. He is at home. They are favored. Uh, he does have usage or should have usage in the passing game. When he played last year, he did get very heavy usage inside the five-yard line. A lot of inside the five and goal line carries for CEH. Uh, we're going to have to see if he gets that this season. But all signs tend to point to him getting a larger market share of the carries, snaps, running back touches, for these Kansas City Chiefs. And if we look back historically at what Andy Reid has done, he gives a lot of work to his RB1. And if CEH is stepping into that role as the RB1 in an Andy Reid offense that we know is extremely high powered and should make repetitive trips inside the 20 and inside the 10 and inside the five every single game, then the upside for somebody like Elaire is massive. It's 6,600. You're going to have to pay for it in week one, but it might be an opportunity to pay up a little bit to be contrarian. Last couple of players that I want to talk about. Derrick Henry will never be a five-box running back, and that sucks. The only reason is they refuse to throw him the ball. Tennessee playing at home and favored this week. You know that he's going to get over 20 touches in this game. You know that he's been one of the best touchdown scorers in the league, but they just refuse to throw him the ball with any sort of consistency. I have been begging. If you have any inside people in the building in Tennessee, please. Try and get them to throw the ball to Derrick Henry just one time a quarter. That's all we want. Doesn't even have to be like a wheel route. Doesn't have to be a cut in. Doesn't have to be anything difficult. Just give this man a screen pass once a quarter and get some dudes out in front of him. Let him roll downhill because if he becomes a five box running back, 8,800 is just too cheap. Last guy is Dalvin Cook. Maybe the best four box running back on the week. The only reason that he's not a five box is because uh, he is on the road. Favored, definite expectation uh, of 20 touches. Great work in the passing game last season, as you can see here in that target category or targets column. Uh, and all of that inside the five work. He is going to be the primary back 80% plus of the snaps and 80% plus of the running back touches for the Minnesota Vikings. The volume is secure. The matchup may not be uh, that tough with Cincinnati, but he is on the road, so he doesn't get that five box designation. But these are the... The main running backs that I think you should be looking at for week one, and hopefully that five box terminology helps you out. Make sure uh, that you check out Raheem Moster as well. Another four box guy. This week, he's a three box guy. They're favored. Uh, he might not even be a three box guy. <laughs> he's a tournament play for me this week. He did have more usage in the passing game than we had seen from him in past uh, seasons, but still not enough to really give you a good significant floor. You want like four, five, six targets a week, every single week. Right now, uh, most air is healthy. They are favored against Detroit, who is a terrible matchup, uh, or sorry, a great matchup for running backs, terrible at stopping opposing running backs. And he has this big time, big splash ability. I think he's going to be really under-owned here in week one, even though he's not somebody who fills out all five boxes. Uh, he's somebody that maybe you should be considering. So hopefully this video helped you. Hopefully in future weeks, we have more actual five box guys to talk about. Uh, but I hope that this kind of framed the discussion for you in a different way to kind of look at running backs from week to week on DraftKings. So thank you for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye. He's a legend.